Okay, now, I know this is gonna sound strange, but I have something that I need to tell you guys. Aang is actually not the last airbender, and I have some proof for that, so stay tuned. This is something that's been on my ideas list basically since I started this channel. Aang really should not have been the last airbender, and he likely wasn't. I know, I know, you guys probably think I'm crazy right now, I'm not making sense. After all, it's called Avatar The Last Airbender. Him not being the last airbender would completely invalidate the title of the series. After all, when Aang learns that the Fire Nation has wiped out the Air Nomads, he is absolutely devastated because he left his people when they needed him the most. He ran away days before the war started. Ultimately, this is a plotline used to add tension to the series and give Aang a better motivation to save the world and fulfill his duties as the Avatar, which he never wanted to be in the first place. At first, this all makes perfect sense. The Fire Nation travel to the Air Temples, they attack the Air Nation, and finish off all of the Airbenders. I mean, this is what we were told happened in the show. This was pretty much all perfect from the beginning of the show until the end of it. But here's where we run into problems. When we dive into the expanded lore, such as Aang's legacy, we learned that the Air Nomads had a flag to symbolize that they were still one nation, despite the distance between them, implying that they traveled the world, so likely most of them wouldn't have been at the Air Temples during this attack. Now, I get it, this should have been obvious because they were called Air Nomads, however, the show really pushes the idea that the Fire Nation went to the Air Temples and finished them off there. The imagery of Gyatso dead, Sozin looking at the burning Air Temples, and not to mention all of the Air Temples being abandoned and destroyed. Never did they mention any of the airbenders escaping, or even the possibility of an air nomad being in a different place other than the air temples. Also, I don't think they were even uh, referred to as air nomads near the beginning of the series. Um, like the first five or six episodes, they always referred to the air nation as monks and airbenders. They never called them air nomads directly, unless you count the intro, which was obviously done afterwards. Moving on to Avatar The Lost Adventures, we get a short comic called Relics. In Relics, the gang is somewhere in the Earth colonies and Aang ends up finding a merchant who is selling Air Nomad Relics. Obviously, Aang is super interested in this and he goes and he talks to the man and he's like, hey, where did you get this Air Nomad pendant from? The merchant informs Aang that he got it from another merchant who is at the highest point on the highest mountain and in the middle of the night, Aang sneaks off to find this man. However, he ends up running into a stupa with Air Nomad markings all over. Over it. Now naturally, just like anyone else, Aang believes that the Air Nomads have to be here and he goes down into the mountain where he spots a room at the bottom and he goes inside of it. Now this room is full of Air Nomad artifacts, clothing, all of that, but the sad part is this was all a setup. It's actually heartbreaking. Aang goes down there thinking he's gonna find another Air Nomad, but it's just the Fire Nation waiting for him. Admiral Zhao explains how they use these tactics to erase the few Air Nomads who escaped the Air Temples. So. You're telling me that only a few air nomads weren't at the temples or escaped the air temples? I'm sorry, that's just ridiculous. Like, the air nomads travel the world, it said it in Aang's legacy. They needed this flag to identify each other, they traveled so much. Like, you would think only a few would be at the temples, right? Like, that would make so much more sense. So, there just has to be more airbenders out there. Which brings me to our next point of this video, and that is, Tai Lee is an airbender. Now, I truly believe when Avatar comes back, uh, they're going to have an arc where Tai Lee uh, either has nomadic roots or she just full on starts airbending. So let me explain. There is a popular theory out there that Tai Lee is an air nomad slash airbender. Before the Avatar Legends tabletop RPG, there really wasn't much merit to this at all. Uh, people were making videos and they were just like, oh, well, she looks like Aang and she's in a circus. So that means she's an airbender. That is probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But luckily, Avatar Legends expanded upon the lore of Avatar Roku's era, and they did it a lot. It gives the whole Tai Lee airbending theory so much more credibility. Now, if you haven't read the Avatar Legends tabletop RPG core book or any of the lore that goes to it, this may sound like I'm doing a bunch of mental gymnastics to try to get this point across, but hear me out, I'll try to explain it the best I can. During Avatar Roku's era, a lot of the Fire Nation elites such as politicians or, or just incredibly rich families were getting into air nomad teaching slash philosophies slash 
way of life. Even the royal family was getting involved. Fire Lord Sozin's sister learned the ways of the air nomad life and philosophies. Now the Fire Nation elites, they weren't just casually into this stuff. No, they were going all out. This wasn't one of those things that was like, oh, well, if I have time, I might read a book. No, they straight up pulled all of their money together to create education centers to learn all about air nomad teachings. This means at some point, the air nomads and the Fire Nation elites were pretty tight, like really close together. So knowing all of this, it's not incredibly far-fetched to say one of Ty Lee's great, great grandparents was an airbender or air nomad. After all, Ty Lee is one of the only non-benders to be shown jumping incredible heights, maybe using subtle amounts of airbending without knowing it. She had insane agility. She knew how to chi block, which was also taught to Fire Lord So's and sister by an air nomad nun. She's also really in touch with her spiritual side. She's always reading people's moods through their aura. Now, of course, you could attribute this to the writers just making her a typical ditzy character who is obsessed with uh, the typical things people like to make fun of, but I don't think so. Another thing, she really does just look like Aang, uh, which was the main reason people started this theory, and it looks like the creators are really expanding upon the lore to get back to that. Look, I'm not saying Ty Lee is 100% an airbender. All I'm saying is Ty Lee being an airbender has been a popular theory since Avatar's original run ended. Now that Avatar is coming back and they're expanding upon the lore a ton, especially adding in air nomad culture into the Fire Nation elites, which Ty Lee most definitely is. She has connections to the princess of the Fire Nation. She would 100% count as an elite. It really sounds like the creators are taking a popular fan theory and expanding upon air nomad lore and Fire Nation lore in order to make this theory canon. Now that I've talked about potential airbenders surviving and Ty Lee potentially not knowing about her air nomad roots, uh, let's talk about why she and other potential airbenders wouldn't know they could airbend. Well, in the episode with Haru, we learned that earthbenders ended up getting extremely skilled at hiding their bending in order to stay hidden from the Fire Nation, to the point where their own families wouldn't even know that they could earthbend. Who's to say that the air nomads couldn't do this as well? Well, obviously, the ones with giant tattoos on their forehead, they couldn't do anything about that, so they're kind of screwed. But everyone else, they could have been incredibly skilled at hiding their bending to the point that their own families wouldn't have known. I could easily see this happening and being explained in Ty Lee's family. So, in short, Aang should not have been the last airbender, and it really only makes sense in the original airings of the show. The extended lore keeps making it more and more likely that, at the very least, some airbenders survive. Ty Lee most likely has air nomad roots, with the Fire Nation elites being tight with the air nomads. It really only makes sense. Now, I already know, a lot of you are gonna try to comment being like, Ty Lee's not an elite. Um, yeah. She, she is. Just because she was in a circus doesn't mean she was an elite. She chose to be there at the end of the day. Her family was very wealthy, sending her to the same private school as Azula, and even having connections to the royal family. So yeah, I'm not saying Ty Lee is 100% an air nomad. I'm just saying, if the show comes back and they do this, I'm not going to be surprised. All right, well, that is the end of the video. I'm gonna have a little chat with you guys for the next 30 seconds. I haven't done one of these in a very long time, but today's my birthday. I remember last year, I also uploaded on my birthday, uh, my 21st birthday, I uploaded my 21st video on this channel, and I believe I actually had 21,000 subs as well. Uh, so one whole year later, we have like 120,000 subs here. So we gained 100,000 subs in a month. And yeah, you guys have uh, made my life pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, thank you guys so much for always watching these videos supporting me commenting such nice things here's to many more years on this channel um yeah i'm gonna go eat some cake or something peace out